waiting to get started. I can see a far greater number of people coming in from Latin America. So uh, it's lovely to see people from Mexico and Peru and Ecuador and Argentina, uh, as well as all the other countries out there. Thank you all very much for joining. So I don't know how many of you took part in the webinar that we did last week, but last week we were really looking at ways in which we can get students to use technology before they come to an online class in such a way that it would boost their performance in the classroom. So last week was really to do with preparing and planning and rehearsing for online lessons. What we're really going to be looking at today is what happens after the online classroom, okay? Um, obviously, part of what happens after the online classroom is students prepare for the next online class. But also what they do is they explore some of the language that they encounter in the online class. Um, they do different activities that allow them to exploit the language and to expand upon what they've done in the classroom. OK, I think when we were putting this pair of webinars together, our main thought was that given that we're now three months into lockdown, um, and, you know, like most of you, all my teaching in the last three months has switched to very much being conducted online through Zoom or through Skype. And given that this is now three months in, I think most of us are probably familiar with the basic tricks of using Zoom, using breakout rooms, using Skype or whatever. So what we really wanted to do was to think a little bit more about how we as teachers can join the dots together and really thread or weave links between what we do in an online classroom and what happens afterwards. So as we were discussing last week, really, one of the things we're very interested in, both Russell and myself, is how we can link what happens in the online lesson what happens in the online classroom with the homework that we go on to set and how we can really link live Zoom sessions or Skype or Teams or whatever it is you're using, whatever platform you're using, how we can link that with the homework that we set and ask students to do. We're also interested in how the homework that we set students can feed into routines and repertoire that students can perform themselves every lesson after class without, after some time, us always having to remind them. So that students basically know what you do after class first and foremost is you go home and do these things. And getting students to develop these little routines and repertoires that they can repeat helps in the long term to develop student autonomy to develop students' independence. So we're going to be looking at different ways in which we can encourage students to revise the language that they've looked at in the actual lessons, ways they can explore that language in a little bit more detail. And we're going to be looking at ways we can get students to exploit and expand upon, not just the language, but the general topic areas that we look at in any given online class, okay? Um, I'm going to be speaking first. Russell will be following up. Um, we hope you'll see how the two halves of the webinar dovetail, how they interact. And all of my ideas come very much from practical lived classroom experience, online classroom experience, uh, and ideas that I've used myself over recent months with my own students in my own online classes. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is something I touched on last week. With the Outcomes series, the Six Level General English series that I'm the co-author of, published by National Geographic Learning, we have a, a bespoke website, which is www.eltoutcomes.com. And on the bespoke website, on the ELT outcome site, 
students and teachers alike can access what we've called the vocabulary builder. And the vocabulary builder is kind of like a, a sort of tailor-made bespoke uh, dictionary that helps students with the classes. So basically what they get is for every level of the series, the six level series, double page by double page, unit by unit, the students can download and access um, the words which we feel as writers, as teachers, we think will be new or problematic for students on each double page. So yeah, it's, uh, sorry Manuela, it's, it's there written here, it's www.elt outcomes.com okay please do have a look um yeah so basically students can go there uh, let me just type it in just in case there you go uh, they can download the vocabulary builder so imagine for example you're teaching like i was this morning um, an upper intermediate group and you've done pages 16 and 17 from the course book okay in the course of the lesson, you've come up against vocabulary like affluent, uh, base as a verb, as in all the embassies are based in this district. I'm based in Amsterdam, but I spend one week a month in Berlin. And boom as a verb, you know, the economy is booming, business is booming. So what we do in the vocab builder is we give explanations. We give some collocates, so you get things like an affluent suburb, an affluent lifestyle. You get some examples, okay? And then you look at different word forms. So you look at boom as a noun, you look at affluence as, an, uh, as a noun, for example. Once you've got this, once students have access to this, obviously, one thing you can tell them to do is, okay, go home, your first homework, read through the vocabulary builder, check you remember the language. If you want to push them a little bit and you don't think that's enough, what you can do is you can get students themselves to write revision tests, okay? It's one less thing for you to do yourself. One thing I often do is to tell students, okay, at the beginning of the next class, no, the vocabulary builder um, is built into the website. Um, edit Selda. So it's just there. It's downloadable for students and teachers to use. You can tell them at the beginning of the next lesson, I'm going to put you in groups. I'm going to ask you to test each other using your own tests that you write, using the examples that you found from the pages we studied last class in the vocabulary builder. And they can do this in the easy way or the difficult way. So the easy way is they basically take examples from the actual vocab builder and they miss out the key word. So what they might do is just almost copy 10 sentences and gap key words. So they might have things like number one, there's a golf course there, which is used by some of the more mm -mm -mm residents, affluent. OK, if you want to make it harder, you can tell them don't gap the key words we looked at in the classroom gap some of the other collocations or phrases from the examples. So here, the key word was affluent, but in one of the examples you have, there are pockets of poverty, but in general, this is an affluent area. So if they want to make the test more difficult, they can write, there are <clears throat> a poverty, but generally it's quite an affluent area. And students can just work in groups at the beginning of the next class. They can swap over their papers or they can show each other on their phones or however they want to do it. And they can test each other. OK. They can also write matching exercises so they can just find five, six, eight, ten verbs from the vocab builder. Um, uh, sorry, Magdalene, I'm just seeing your question. Yes, it's generally for users. I mean, it makes more sense if you're using the course book that you can then access the vocab builder. The vocab builder was designed very much for the actual course book. And here what they do is they just write a matching exercise, again, that they can test their peers with. They can test other students in the class with. So they might have, right, undergo an economic boom, climb out of poverty, live in relative affluence. 
So students are making the revision activities themselves. Another way you could twist this is they could write revision questionnaires. So they could just test each other in pairs. They could have their definitions and they could say, right, OK, so Veronica, do you remember if you have a lot of money and you're able to live comfortably, you're very mm -mm -mm, affluent, good, well done. And you can also say that you are mm, a very affluent lifestyle. Can you remember? No, lead. OK, so they test each other using the definitions given in the vocab builder. You can also get students to make their own Quizlet cards, or you can delegate someone in the class each week to make Quizlet cards based on the words in the vocabulary builder. Um, I like doing it like this, where they have whole sentences. Um, on the front of the Quizlet card, they have three different sentences from the vocabulary builder with the same word missing, OK? So what they see on the front is there's been a mm in house prices. The city is undergoing an economic mm. The area is starting to mm. They check. Can they remember? Boom. OK, they flip the card over on the Quizlet app and they can check themselves that they've remembered. So these are all things that students can do themselves to test themselves and test their fellow students using the vocabulary builder. Another thing you can do is just use sound files. So basically, you use the vocab builder yourself. You get your smartphone, OK? You use your voice recording app, and you just record 10 or 15 chunks from what you've studied. You say them twice at normal speed, and you send the file. So you might say something like, right, number one, an affluent area, an affluent area. Number two, based in the district based in the district. You send them, students write down what they think they hear. You can then either send the answers or they can check in the vocab builder online to see if they've written the correct thing. Again, if you want to expand upon this and encourage some kind of personalization, you can get students to write their own sentences using the chunks or the collocations that you've recorded and sent to them. They then bring them to class and compare. They can decide who's got the best examples. Why? So it might be something like, you know, an affluent area. Um, I don't know. One of my students at the moment lives in a very affluent area in Tokyo, lives in Ginza, a very affluent area in Tokyo. OK, uh, if you go to Kensington and Knightsbridge, a lot of embassies are based in the district, OK? Um, running online platforms is a booming industry at the moment. So again, students can be, uh, can, can be asked to think about, OK, you've heard this vocabulary, you've understood it, you've managed to write it down. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to use it? How can you personalise it? Another thing that students can do is Either as a teacher, you can do this for them. And if you are a bilingual teacher teaching monolingual students, this is a kind of superpower that you have. OK, um, if you're not in that position or you just want the students to do a bit more work and yourself to do a little bit less work after classes, what you can do is get students. And I think this works particularly well, not exclusively, but it works particularly well with lower level classes. Um, you get the students to make and record bilingual records of new language, where they hear it in their own first language first, and then you pause, and then they have to try and say it in the second language. And I'll give you an example of how this works, okay? This is something my Russian teacher, I'm, I'm an absolute beginner student of Russian at the moment. To my shame, this is something my Russian teacher makes for me and sends to me, and I'll show you how it works. Husband and wife. Husband and wife, and I have to remember the Russian, which is mush i jena. And then I check. Mush i jena. Husband and wife. Mush i jena. What? Sto? What? Sto? Sto? 
store. What? Что? Sorry. Sorry is извини. 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 Sorry. Извини. A baby boy. Baby boy is маленький мальчик. Маленький мальчик. <sighs> A baby boy. Маленький мальчик. One more. Tea with milk. Oh, tea with milk. Tea with milk. Chai some moloko. Chai some molokom. Chai some molokom. Chai smolokom. Chai smolokom. What's interesting for me is my teacher says the, the words twice, and the second time she usually says them faster, so I hear it like this. Tea with milk. Chai smolokom. Chai smolokom. Chai smolokom. So it sounds like one word almost to me. And basically, once I've got these sound files, I test myself. I, I listen to the English, in my case. For your students, they would listen to their own first language first, okay? Um, then I check, okay, have I remembered it? Then I practice saying it. And your students can do that on the bus, they can do that before they go to bed. You know, they can do that sitting in front of their computer at home. They can just have that playing. And again, it's another way of using the language that you've studied in class as an easy self-study tool that students can, can practice with themselves. So two more quick ideas from me. Um, one is something we talked about last week a little bit, which is in the outcome series, for example, um, you find this in other books as well, where you have speaking sections that you want students to really get good at. Speaking sections which kind of represent can-do competencies. So this is from a unit two of upper intermediate outcomes, where the kind of can-do goal is uh, can show visitors around your hometown. We talked last week about how you can get students to rehearse and research and prepare for their performance in class. In class, they imagine they're going to drive friends around their hometown or a city that they're in now or a city that they know well. They prepare, they write the details. Um, and basically, they then do this little role play in class. OK, you know, lovely weather, isn't it? Yes, it is. So if you look out of your window there on the left, you can see my local Turkish supermarket. It's called Yashar Halim. You might know it because it was featured once in Headway Intermediate many years ago. Oh, right. Wow. I think it does ring a bell. Once you've practiced it in class, one thing you can do is you can ask students to record their own versions um, at home. OK. Obviously, online, they can record it with a partner. You know, you can do a kind of split screen recorded version. They can practice it. You can share it with the whole class. You can upload it to a, a class blog or vlog, or they can just send it to you or just do it themselves and keep it as a record. And to be honest, I think keeping yourself speaking a foreign language as a record is a really good thing to do because sometimes when you get frustrated and you feel like you're not making any progress, you go back and you listen to yourself from three months ago and you think, ah, I was rubbish. God, I'm much better than that now. So it gives you a kind of clear sense of your own forward momentum, your own movement, your own progress. Another thing that you can do, again, is using the um, ELT Outcomes website. So what we have um, in Outcomes is some kind of self-study or extension activity connected to every conversation practice that we have. So students can go online or, of course, teachers can do this in the classroom if they wish to. But I think the way this works best is you tell the students, OK, you did the conversation practice in class today. That was great. I want you to go home, watch the extra video online, then record your own version with a partner. And I'll show you the video for this particular unit um, that we've got up on the website now. Uh, Emily, if you can just call that up. Let's 
see. Yep, I'm just we? pulling Let's it up see. now. One second, can you all hear me? Seagro Street, and in a minute we'll move on to Valarito Street. This whole area is really up. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, well, welcome to my lovely hometown, Thessaloniki. And do you have your seatbelt on because the traffic can be crazy here. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's go. So, where are we? Well, uh, this area we are going through now is Sigro Street. And in a minute, we'll move on to Valarito Street. This whole area is really up and coming now. It used to be really run down and quite rough, but it's pretty trendy now. Okay. In the daytime, there are still lots of old-fashioned fabric stores and so on. And then in the evening, the whole area really comes to life. There are all kinds of different bars and everything. It's great. You should come down here if you get a night of work. Okay. Well, it sounds great. Then, if we go down Ionostra Gumi Street, you'll see a little street on your left called Basilios Heraclio, where you can see the traditional meat and fish market. If you wander around the arcades, you can find lots of little tavernas, like small restaurants where you can eat seafood and drink ouzo. You know ouzo? No. What is it? Some kind of alcohol? Yeah, it's kind of our national drink. It's usually drunk with uh, water. It was a kind of white color. It's quite strong. You need to be a bit careful with it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for warning me. Thank you. Give me one minute just to uh, see where I was. Yeah, so... Thanks, Emily. Let me just see if my webcam's there. Yeah, so um, as you can see, basically these videos are high level students themselves doing in perfectly accurate English. And actually, in English that recycles a lot of the grammar and vocabulary from the double page that the students will have done in class themselves. So the students can watch these extra videos. The videos consolidate and extend how much they can remember um, about the vocabulary and the grammar that they've studied in class. And, you know, I think it's also refreshing for students to see other non-native speakers, you know, speakers who probably speak a little bit better than they do, but other non-native speakers talking about their own hometowns, their own home cities. So what you had there was a Greek guy showing, uh, I think he was Austrian, uh, an Austrian woman around his hometown of Thessaloniki. 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 I can't remember where the stress is in the town, but Thessaloniki. Uh, and I think, again, for students, it's heartening to realise that English can be used to word your own world. It's not just for native speakers to talk about native speaker realities. It's about non-natives to talk to other non-natives about their own realities. You might just want students to go home and watch those videos um, in the same way as you might just want students to go home, read the vocabulary builder, watch the extra video that goes with it. That's great. I think that's much better than doing nothing. If you want to extend that further, what you can do is download from the ELT Outcomes website. Um, first of all, you can download a kind of comprehension exercise. So you watch the videos, you write what you hear about the traffic, the Uzo, the area by the harbour. So, you know, the traffic, uh, you'd better put your seatbelt on because the traffic can be crazy sometimes. Uzo, oh, it's our national drink. It's quite strong. You'd probably better drink it with water. Okay. Um, so again, they can do that. 
they can practice the pronunciation, they can watch and listen, and they can say it themselves, they can think about the words or phrases that are hard for them, and they can then uh, download the video script from the ELT outcomes. And yes, I think you can do it as a flipped one. I usually get students to do it at home after they've done a version of the conversation practice themselves in class, Paula. Then what they do is they listen again, they complete, they fill in the gaps, they can read through. As they're reading through, they're reading as well as hearing some of the vocabulary and some of the grammar that they met in class. And then finally, what you might get them to do is to do their own version where they record a little guided tour of um, their own town or their own city or somewhere else that they want to show you around. So those are some of my ideas on ways in which you can get students to revise the vocabulary that they've studied in the course book and in the actual online lesson, ways in which you can get students to make revision exercises to test other students, you know, which is kind of good practice for them and, you know, a little bit less work for you and ways in which you can get students to expand upon and explore in different kinds of ways some of the speaking activities that you want them to that they will have done in class that you want them to practice and do again better as part of their digital homework so i'm going to say goodbye for now i'll pop up at the end the website, again, I'll just write one more time. It's eltoutcomes.com. It's the companion site. Oh, sorry, Emily beat me to it. It's the companion site to the outcome series available through National Geographic Learning. So I'm going to hand you over to Russell, who's going to build on and expand some of the ideas I've been talking about. And I'll pop back later just to say goodbye. Thank you. Hi guys, just want to make sure, can you all hear, hear me clearly? Hugh, that was lovely. I love the, really these ideas of reworking the texts that the students have already had a connection with. This is what we really want to be doing, reworking language, extracting language from the book, from the platform and using it. And I'm going to carry on with Hugh's ideas in a similar sort of way. I'm going to go a little bit wider and talk about how we can connect what we do in the live session with what we do before and what we do after the lesson okay so when we think about teaching online really to maximize the part that we do online to make that the most interesting part of the lesson to really maximize the use of the online time we need to think about the activities that we do before to get the students prepared and the activities that we do after and what I'm going to do first of all is going to think about if you was going to ask your students maybe to watch a video at home. For example, National Geographic Learning have a lot of content on their platforms that go with the books. It's a little bit with the, the what, what Hugh was talking about, and I'm going to show you one a bit later, where there's loads and loads of video content. And we can get the students to watch a video at home. And then in the class, we can use a technology, and I'm going to use a technology called Answer Garden, to collect all their ideas again together. And then maybe afterwards, we use that then for another homework idea. And I'm going to demonstrate now what I mean by that. So I'm just going to come over, talk about this idea of how we can link a lesson together. So for homework, the students might read a text, they might look at a picture and take some notes, or they might watch a video and take some notes, or watch a video and answer some questions. Then you do an activity in the class related to the video. So what I'm going to do for this particular activity, I'm just going to screen share something for you. So I'm just going to come over and show you a technology. So I'm just coming over to screen share. Really, really simple technology that you can use immediately with your students. So I'm just going to come and open it up onto the screen, okay, and just bring it up here. It's called Answer Garden. Just make sure that you can see the same thing. And all I'm going to do here is click on this button here. This is completely free. And I'm going to write in a question. And the question that I'm going to ask is, what did 
he do? Don't worry, you'll understand in a minute because we're going to watch a video. Okay, what did he do? And I'm going to just scroll down and I'm going to just change this one thing here at the bottom. Instead of making it limited to only 20 characters, I'm going to make it a bit longer that you can write a longer sentence. And then I'm just going to click on create. Nothing else. Now that gives me a link. And we're going to come back to that in a minute because you're going to write your answers in here. And we're going to collect all your answers together. Okay, so that is a technology called Answer God. And you'll understand in a minute when I show you now. Emily, can we play the video um, of... Um, the presentation. Yep. So they can just watch the video of the presentation. So I just want you to watch this video. You can take notes if you want, just for a couple of minutes, and just note down all the actions that he does. Okay, so, so let me just come back into the presentation. So you've watched the video. Emily, turn off your sound, yeah. So we've watched the video, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to think about that. Uh, think about what you just saw. Think about all the things that you saw. I'm going to give you a link now to a website, and I want you to write one sentence about what he did. He did lots of different things. Don't write it in the chat window. We're going to collect all your givers, all your ideas together. So let me come back and just screen share the Answer Garden. All I'm going to do in Answer the Garden is I'm going to share this link with you here. And I want you to simply write in here what he did. So, for example, he sang a song. That's one example of what he did. And then just submit it. So he sang a song, he knocked over the whiteboard, he knocked over his pens, he answered the telephone, he dropped the interactive whiteboard, he did a presentation back uh, upside down. I want you just to simply, going to give you a link now, so I'm going to come back, I'm going to give you the link, and I want you to click on the link and write one sentence of one thing that you saw the presenter do. Let me just send you the link now in the window, so I'm going to paste that to you now. And just click on that link and write your answers. Just click on the link now and write your answers. Okay, very simple technology. It's just called Answer Garden and it will collect together. Okay, collect together all of your answers. Just write on the click on that link. I'll put it once more. Click on the link and write your answers. Okay, one sentence of what he did wrong. Okay, and I can see already that some of you are writing your answers. Let me have a look. I can see loads of answers already. He answered the phone. He was extremely disorganized. He stood off the projector. He used a puppet. He did a sound check. His presentation was upside down. Fantastic. Loads of you have collected together your ideas. Just give you a couple more seconds to do that. 
let me just show you exactly what that looks like. So I can collect together these ideas in, in the activity that we do in the class. So you watch the video at home and you took some notes or maybe you answered some, some questions. And now in the class, the first activity is write a sentence about what he did during the presentation. Now, let me show you what you've just all produced. So I'm going to come over and screen share that activity. OK, that website is called Answer Garden. Look what you all did. Now we've got all of these answers on the screen, all of these sentences. Now what I could do is use this for another activity. One important thing to do is when students generate contact, con content, when they do something like this, you need to then use this. So, for example, you might say to the students in the class or even for homework, right now I want you to write out exactly what he did in order. So he came into the presentation. The first thing he did was knock over his pens. The next thing he did was drop his interactive or, or knock over the interactive whiteboard. Then he did a sound check. Then he threw and then you might just rewrite basically what he did. Or you might do some kind of activity where you organized these thing these um things here into the, 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 the verbs and, and the objects, for example. So you do some kind of activity where you're actually working with this content, okay? So you, we, you generated all of that content there, and then we could actually work with it, okay? So that website is called Answer Garden. At the end, I'm going to give you a special handout that will allow will show you how to use Answer Garden. Answer Garden is a free technology. It's great for collecting sentences together. It's great for um, basically um, getting your students to, um, um, for example, brainstorm a topic. Okay. So the idea is students watch the video at home. Then they have in the class. They produce some content together collaboratively using Answer Garden, and then you use that for another activity. Okay? I mean, the activity that you do afterwards might be very different. It might be give him some advice on how to improve his presentation, or it might be, as I said, write the story out in order, in a timeline, etc. Okay? But that idea of linking what you do for homework with what you do in the classroom. Now, the reason I did that with video is because. The um, National Geographic Learning platforms have loads of video and they're perfect to get the students to watch at home and then to use in the class. Right. That was my first idea, making use of Answer Garden. And I will give you a handout at the end so that you can learn to use Answer Garden. Now, Hugh showed you some lovely ideas with vocabulary. And I want to kind of talk a little bit more about this because both Hugh and I are interested in this idea of taking language from the text, from the videos, from the listening, and then using it for language practice. And one activity that I do a lot, I, I'm not like... Um, Hugh, I'm not studying Russian, I'm studying Polish. One activity that I like to do is to make cards, just one piece of paper. On one side of the piece of paper is a sentence, either from the reading or from the listening. And on the other, I write the same sentence, but only with the first word and the last word. And this is how I practice my Polish. So I have the sentence, the complete sentence on one side. I turn it over. I only have the first word and the last word, and I try to remember the sentence. So this is a great way of taking sentences from the reading that you've done and then turning them into activities. But the interesting thing is it doesn't have to be you that does this. As Hugh was saying, get the students to do it. They can make their own cards. So they take the listening, uh, for example, the tape script, or they take the reading they take sentences out of that reading activity and on one side of the piece of paper they put the complete word and then the other side only the first and the last now the students can work in groups and they can use the cards they've made to test each other you can do it in groups or you can do it in pairs now i was looking at some of the sentences that hugh had from the, his um uh 
text or tape script about Thessaloniki. So you've got here the sentences here. Welcome to my lovely hometown. The whole area used to be quite run down. You can see the traditional meat market. It's our national drink. It's a beautiful area of lots of streets. So maybe the student writes these five sentences on five different pieces of paper. And then on the other side of the piece of paper, they do exactly the same sentence, but with only the beginning word and the end word. And then the students can work in pairs. They can test each other with their cards. So you can make the cards, but it's, it can be much more interesting if you get the students to make the cards and then use them in, in the classroom. And what again, the, the point that, that Hugh and I are making is these cards, this language that you want to be working with is language from the book. You don't want to just be taking it from anywhere. You want to be reworking and reusing the listenings, the tape scripts, from the book that you're working from. Another idea is get the students to write new sentences with one word changed. And then, again, they read the sentences to the group. So that my first sentence is, welcome to my ugly hometown. And then you say to me, no, it's not welcome to my ugly hometown. It's welcome to my lovely hometown. So you get the students to, to, the students to write correct sentences but they change one word. So in all of these examples here, all I've done is change one word. That can be a great example. Yep. So they make the they, they make the car the these um, on p on just simply on pieces of paper. All they need to do is do it on pieces of paper. On one side is the full sentence. On the other is the half sentence. Now, just to make a point for those of you that use Quizlet, I also do this when I'm. Uh, working with Quizlet. I'm going to, that's that wonderful um, uh, answer garden that we've all produced together, but I'm going to jump over to Quizlet. And in Quizlet, I do exactly the same. If you look at these flashcards, these are the words that I'm studying at the moment. Okay, so I get here the sentence in Polish, the whole sentence, and then I flick it over and try to, okay, sorry, I flick it. So I've got the sentence in Polish and I flick it over and I've I've got only Moy and Vioski and I try to remember the whole sentence. OK, so the same thing. OK, so I've got Dom, Miaubi, Dva, Piontra. No, and then I click it over. And then again, Dom, Miaubi, Dva, Piontra. And I try to remember that I can click back. And I can check if I got it right or wrong. OK, so I do exactly the same on Quizlet. I make the Quizlet cards. And the good thing when you do it in Quizlet is that you can hear the sentences. So I can hear that actually being said to me in Polish. Obviously, when you make the cards, that doesn't work the same. OK, but it is a nice way of working with the vocabulary. Let me just come back to the presentation. So making cards on just one on one side of the piece of paper, full sentence on the other or this idea, the second idea that I suggest, get the students to make sentences on pieces of paper. They read the sentence out and then the other students have to guess what is the word they changed for the first one was welcome to my ugly hometown. If you go back to the original, it was welcome to my lovely hometown. OK, so students are told, take the sentence and change one thing read out your sentence to the rest of the class and see if they can remember what word has been changed. Now, the good thing about this is you're not asking the students to write an incorrect sentence. You're simply asking them to substitute. So if we look at the second one, the whole town used to be quite run down, but the, the sentence before was not the whole town, but it was the whole area used to be quite run down. So students are substituting language. They have to listen to what their, the person in the group says and guess what word has been changed. Again, we are working, always working from using the language in the book, using the language in the listenings, reworking, regenerating language, helping our students become more and more efficient at the way that they study. So this really links into the ideas that Hugh was suggesting earlier. OK. Now, so that's that idea. I'm going to show you one more really nice idea. This. Let's see if we can do this as well. We're going to use another technology now called Padlet. I'm sure some of you know Padlet. Now, I said to you earlier 
that in the National Ge Geographic Learning, there are, lots of, there are lots of videos that we can make use of. I'm just going to quickly show you an example of what I mean. So I'm going to jump over to their platform, or one of their platforms. And right, we've looked at that one. Now we're just going to jump back to here. Okay, so this is an example of uh, a platform. This one's Pathways, and you can see Pathways. And if I click on here, in the resources, I get loads and loads of video content, okay? Lots of really interesting stuff, as you can imagine, pulling out content that National Geographic uh, have created. Great videos. I was looking at some of these videos today. They're absolutely fantastic. Now, earlier, we looked at the idea of the students watching a video before the lesson, and then in the lesson you did an activity using Answer Garden, but this time we're going to change it and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to imagine that you're actually going to watch the video for homework. And what I'm going to do, let me just come back to the presentation, is that we're going to watch an interview with Steve McCurry. Steve McCurry is a photographer for National Geographic. He's one of the most famous uh, photographers uh, that, uh, if, who, who works for National Geographic. I remember seeing uh, some of his uh, presentation of his work when I was in Italy a couple of years ago. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about we're going to meet, we're going to inter, we're going to listen to an interview with Steve McCurry. If you were going to interview Steve McCurry, a very famous photographer who works for National Ge Geographic, can you think of questions that you would ask him? Just think for a minute about possible questions. You might ask him questions about countries where he's been, awards that he's won, his interests, pictures that he's taken, his career, what he plans to do in the future. Just think for a minute. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to think of one question and add it to this website. So let me show you the website. I'm going to click on screen share again. And this time we're going to use a technology called Padlet. Let me just show very simple technology. So I'm on Padlet now and I'm going to make a Padlet. So I'm going to click here, I click on this one here, and I'm simply going to write interview, interview with Steve McCurry okay click on next now we're ready to start now all I need you to do is you click on the screen you write your name at the top so I'm going to write your Russell here and then I want you to write one question that if you were going to interview Steve McCurry what question would you ask him so I'm going to ask him what is your favorite picture okay he's taken many famous pictures i just click off the screen and that question is added to the screen so i'm going to send you a link now and i want you to think of a question that you would ask steve mccurry if you had the opportunity to interview him so i'm going to copy that link come back to the screen click back into the presentation i'm going to click into the presentation I'm going to just paste it in now I want you to click on that link click on that link and add one question only please just click on it and add one question I want to collect together all your questions ready for the interview with Steve McCurry Now, I'm going to have a quick look while you're doing that, and I can see many of you are now writing. Don't forget, put your name at the top and then just write one question. Just write your name at the top if you can and write one question. Now, this is quite difficult because there are about 500 of you who are accessing at the same time. Obviously, when you're teaching your students, it's going to be a lot easier. But I can see many people putting up different questions. Have you been in dangerous situations? What is your favorite kind of picture? Yeah, what is the highest place you've been? What is the most dangerous place you've been? Good. What is the most interesting place you've traveled to? I can see loads of people asking great questions. Okay. Give you a couple more minutes. All your questions coming onto the screen. Very simple. The idea is we're linking the, the work in the class with the homework. 
So you're getting loads and loads of questions onto the screen here. I can see loads of you asking questions. I'll just give you a couple more minutes. Yeah, what's the most amazing place you've visited? What kind of pictures do you prefer to take? What is the most memorable place you've photographed? Where do you live? What are you planning to do in the future? What is your favorite story? Lovely, yeah? Why did you become a photographer? Many of you are asking brilliant questions, okay? Just give you one more minute to finish. Okay. Are you a happy man? Great question. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. So let's just think about what we're doing here, right? Let's gonna, we're going to have a look at it in a minute. I'm saying to you, to, tonight's lesson is for you to watch that interview with Steve McCurry. Now, obviously, in the lesson, you're probably going to have 15, 20 students maximum. Some of you might have bigger classes, but you're not going to have 602. That's how many I've got in my lesson today with you guys. Now, let me just show you what it looks like, what you've done. So let me just screen share. And if we screen share, we can see that the Padlet now has got loads and loads of questions on it. Amazing. OK, tons and tons of questions all collected together. Now, I got to think what is going to use that for. Remember, the key thing is don't just get your students to create some content. Make sure you use it. Now, the homework could be something simple like now watch the video tonight and tell me which of those questions was answered, which of those questions wasn't. Something so simple like that where you're using the content so the students could go home. They could watch the video and then they can look at the Padlet and decide which questions were answered, which questions weren't answered. Something as simple as that. OK, so then they would come back into the next lesson the next day and you would say to them, OK, which questions from the Padlet were asked, did the, 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 were answered in the video and which ones weren't? And then you might say, OK, well, these questions were answered. Tell me the answers. So then, you know, of course, that they've actually listened to the video as well. Something like this, where you're connecting. And again, the emphasis, though, here is we're not suggesting you work with other content. No, we're working with the content from the book. It's really important that we're practicing working with the content using these other tools and technologies and techniques, the ones that Hugh was demonstrating, to make the book and the platform more interesting. That's essentially what we want to do. OK. Um, so really nice technologies there, very simple technologies. They're free. One is called Padlet and one is called Answer Garden. Now, what I'm going to do, just going to click onto the next screen. If you would like to have the handout with the videos to show you how to use Padlet, how to use Answer Garden and how to use Quizlet, all you need to do is email Russell Stanar, sorry, yeah, Russell Handout, sorry, Russell Handout, you can see it on the screen there, Russell Handout at gmail.com, and automatically I will send you a video to help you use Padlet, a video to help you to use Answer Garden, and actually another video to help you to use Quizlet. Just send me an email in the subject, right, National Geographic, and then say, hello, I am blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah. And that will give you automatically will send you three help videos so that you can try out these ideas. OK, what we're trying to emphasize is the importance of reworking and reusing the content from the book, from the platform and look at different ways of connecting to it. And obviously, very importantly, encourage your students to be more Thanks, autonomous much, through um, these types of activities. OK. I hope everyone found both parts of that webinar very useful. Um, I just wanted to finish off, really. I included a couple of links to, for example, the Lexical Lab Instagram site, um, which is just Lexical Lab on Instagram, which we use quite a lot. Um, if anyone's interested in looking at the website I run, the company we run, uh, it's www.lexicallab.com not dot co sorry that's a typing mistake on our part and again if anyone wants to get in touch 
um, it's info at lexicallab.com. Okay. Um, always happy to answer questions and, you know, deal with any queries or anything anyone needs help with. Thank you to so many of you, over 600 I see now, um, for joining us uh, at this time. And thank you to Emily and to Russell for being such excellent company. <laughs> Thanks, Hugh. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, everyone here. Like you said, to all 600 of you for being with us for an hour. That was great. We really hope you found the session useful and have some new strategies to go take away and use in your classrooms and virtual classrooms. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. We will be sending you a certificate for um, being here today. We'll also be sending along a recording to the whole full session so you can view that too and send along to any of your colleagues who might have missed it. We'll also be sending along a PDF of the slides as well and we will get these to you in about five business days so right towards the uh, beginning of next week. Great, so thanks everyone. Um, just to note if you are using any of the National Geographic Learning products, we have some great digital resources to help both students and teachers. Be sure to contact your rep about that to learn more or on our main homepage, we do have a link uh, to learn more about the digital resources that we have available to help support you. Great, thanks so much everyone. We hope you see you at a webinar again soon. We have another one coming up this week for assessing young learners online. So if you teach young learners, uh, be sure to join that. We'd love to see you there. All right, everyone, I'm gonna redirect you all to a feedback survey now. Um, we look forward to hearing your feedback on the session. Hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is where you are. And happy teaching, everyone. Thanks for being part of the community. All right, take care now.